Good morning. Happy Sabbath to everyone. We are so happy that the Lord has given us a beautiful Sabbath day, sunshine, and reminds me of the beautiful Florida. We have had some uh, cloudy day, and in this precious day, the Lord has shown that uh, He is our light. And it is my privilege to have this opportunity to share with you the message for today. Last uh, week, in October the 22nd, was the 160th anniversary of the, the great disappointment that the Advent people had in 1844. For many, it was a disappointment, but for us, it's not really, because later on, we could understand the great event that took place in 1844, on October 22nd. We know now that for 160 years, Christ is doing his final work of intercession for his people. So it's been already 160 years. We know now that uh, since that time, the, the work of investigation, the judgment is taking place for this long. But also, we know that the sealing of the 144,000 is been going on since that day. And since that time, the final warning written in Revelation 14 has been going on, sometimes in, in a loud voice, sometimes in a uh, little voice. Now, if you take a look at that prophetic time, we know that we have already overpassed the 120 years that was given in the time of Noah. Already, you know, we had 40 more years after, you know, if we compare the 120 that was given in the time of Noah, uh, and we are 160, so it's 40 years more. Now, but what about if we compare the 40 years that the people of Israel wandered in the wilderness? So that's four times, 160 years. So it's been a great delay. Now you may ask, why that delay? You know, the Lord in his wisdom, he has given us plenty of light in his word. And he gave us a parable in the book of Matthew that explained the reason why this delay. And those who complain of, the, the person that complained because they delayed is called an evil servant. We are supposed to wait for the Lord's return, you know, being ready joyfully that he may come at any time. Whenever he, he pleases, he can come and I'm ready. But there is a, uh, somebody, again, called the evil servant. In the book of Matthew 24, I invite you to open the Bibles with me. In the 24th chapter, Matthew 24, and we will read verses 48 to 51. He says, But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and, and shall begin to smite his fellow servant, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. And verse 51 says, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So brethren, notice this, that the person that says, my Lord delayeth his coming and he began to become uh, careless. He said, that person is called an evil servant. Now, but if you compare 160 years, you may say, yeah, in reality, you know, we have overpassed the prophetic time in the time of Noah and the 40 years in the wilderness for four time. Now, what is the reason why the Lord has not come yet for the second time? Why is that, brethren? We know that even the Bible has light for those things. In 2 Peter, uh, I'm sure that everybody is familiar with this text. 
2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, he said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he but is long suffering to us word. And why? And this is the reason. He said, Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, brethren, you know, the Lord is patiently waiting for everyone to come to repentance. So no wonder why the Lord has not come. Now, we should not say, as that evil servant said, my Lord delayed his coming and begin to do all kinds of things. No, we are to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And notice what he says in verse 10. He said, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The air also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So brethren, the Lord is patiently, He's long suffering, waiting for everyone to come to repentance because that's why Jesus came to this world. That uh, everyone that believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But brethren, so right now the investigative judgment is taking place. So these are very, very solemn. You know, if we go to history, in 1844, the people uh, got confused. They thought that Christ was coming to the earth for the second time, and they were ready. They, were, they sold their properties. They were doing all kinds of preparation to receive the Lord, but they were great disappointed when Christ did not come. And we understand that since that time, we are living in a very solemn moment, you know, the investigative judgment is very uh, solemn time. It's a time for preparation. And let me share with you what Sister White wrote about this time that we are living. In Great Controversy, page 425, he said, while the investigative judgment is going forth in heaven, while the sins of penitent believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is to be a special work of purification, of putting away of sin among God's people upon earth. So, brethren, during this time, he said there should be a special work of purification. This is what we are supposed to be doing today since 1844. Another statement in Testimony to Ministers, page 234. Just two lines. You say, The time of judgment is a most solemn period when the Lord gathers His own from among the tares. So notice this. You know, we know that the wheat and the tares, they will be together until the harvest. But now it is said that in the time of the investigative judgment, he said, this is at the period when the Lord gathers his own from among the tares. So that means the separation is taking place now. The investigative judgment is doing that. And brethren, these are very, very important moments that we are living. In Great Controversy, page 490, he said, we are now living in the great day of atonement. I hope everyone will understand what's a, the day of atonement. He's referring to that day that the Israelites used to celebrate. He said, in the typical service, while the high priest was making the atonement for Israel, all were required to afflict their souls by repentance of, of sin and humiliation before the Lord lest they be cut off from among the people. So they were required to repent and to afflict their souls 
and to wait patiently for the atonement of the Lord. Now, and notice the application. He said, in like manner, all who would have their names retained in the book of life should now, when? You know, now, he said, since 1844, in the few remaining days of their probation, afflict their souls before God by sorrow for sin and true repentance. So notice what he said. Notice the expression used by Sister White here. Now, in the few remaining days, probation time is very close. It's very short. And he will come. He will soon come to an end. So, brethren, we are living at a very uh, solemn time. And, and Sister White wrote uh, in 1888, notice what she said in, in Great Controversy 490, she said, for more than 40 years, this work has been in progress. Soon, and listen to this, soon, none know how soon, it will pass to the cases of the living. In the awful presence of God, our lives are to come up in review. So this says soon, page at 490, a great controversy. And this is the version of 1888. So soon, he said, none know how soon it will pass to the cases of the living. Our lives will pass, will be examined by the great judge of the universe. So brethren, these are very solemn times. And it's true that the time has been longer than we thought. Yeah. It's been longer, 160 years. That's a long time, brethren. But he said the Lord is long-suffering, waiting for all of us to come to repentance. <laughs> now, what other reasons are given for this delay? What other reasons? And this is one of the most uh, uh, remarkable reasons why the Lord has delayed his coming. This is found in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 69. Selected Messages, book 1, page 69. He said, For 40 years did unbelief, murmuring, and rebellion shut up ancient Israel from the, from the land of Canaan. So what was the reason why the people of Israel has to wander for 40 years in the wilderness? I will repeat again. He said, unbelief, that's number one, murmuring, and rebellion. Well, now tell me, you know, does these things disappear already? We don't have all these things? So, brethren, and, and this is what, uh, what she said. He said, in neither case was the promise of God at fault. It is unbelief, the wilderness, and unconsecration, and strife among the Lord's professed people that have kept us in this world of sin, and sorrow so many years. So again, the same reason, the same unbelief, murmuring and rebellion has kept us in this world. And for that reason, Jesus has not come. And worldliness also. So brethren, we know that Christ will come. And we read in Hebrews 10, 37, and yet in a little while, and he that will come shall come and will not tarry. So this is the promise that he will come and not tarry. But what must happen before? What must happen? He says here, Christ's object, object lesson, page 69. I know many of you know this by heart. He said, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. So when will Christ come? He said, when the character of Christ. So no wonder why the delay. No wonder why 160 years had, has passed already. Because the people are repeating 
the same experience of the people of Israel. Unbelief, love of this world, murmuring, rebellion take place among the professed people of God. So brethren, but whether we want it or not, prophecy will be fulfilled. And he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. There is a prophecy in the book of Revelation. I would like to share with you this. Revelation chapter 10. Then chapter of Revelation. Before we read, we know that this chapter refer to the experience of the people uh, in 1844. That was a fulfillment. Uh, if you recall that, he said that uh, the angel that gave the little book, which means the prophetic uh, uh, book that was given to John, and he ate it, and it was sweet in his mouth, but what happened uh, in his belly? He said it was bitter. Now, in this verse 7, we're only going to read verse 7, chapter 10, and verse 7. He says, But in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophets. So notice that in the days of this, we don't have time to explain this, but this is referring to 1844. If we read chapter 11 um, and verses 18 and 19, we also, <coughs> uh, we can read from verse 15 so we can understand exactly that refers to the same thing. He said, and the seven angels sound and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom of his world of this world are become to are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever so notice is that this is the seven angel and we read in, in, in verse 7 and the chapter 10 that in the days of the voice of the seven angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God will be finished now, verse 18, and the nations were angry. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 11 and verse 18 now. And the nations were angry, and the, thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and then, the fear, and then that fear thy name, small and great, and should as destroy them which destroy the earth. And verse 19, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightning and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So I read these verses so you can understand clearly that uh, this verse 7 that of chapter 10 that we read, refers to the time of 1844. Now, but the event that it announced there is uh, that in the days of the voice of the seven angels, so in the days of the investigative judgment since 1844 until now, he said the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophet. So brethren, this is what is taking place today. Now, the mystery of God, what is it? What is it? The Apostle Paul explained in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Timothy 3 and verse 16. He said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justify in the spirit, seen of angels, preach unto the Gentiles, believe on this world, receive up into glory. So when he said here that in the days of the voice of the seven angels, the mystery of God shall be finished, it is directly connected to Jesus Christ. Christ <coughs> is the great mystery that was kept secret for you 
uh, generation and generation. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 16, we're not going to read that, that this secret was kept uh, in secret, he says, since the world began. But now in this time, he says that the mystery of God shall be finished. <clears throat> We know that Christ's birth, His life and ministry, His death and resurrection, and ascension into heaven to appear now in the presence of God is declared to be the mystery of God. And the Apostle Paul said that this, there is no controversy on that. He said, without controversy, great is the mystery of God. Christ was manifested to us. But he says that by his victory over temptation and sin <clears throat> and by his perfect life, his perfect example and perfect sacrifice and his <laughs> complete reconciliation is also had been, had been made manifest to all of us as a great mystery. <clears throat> In Christ's Object Lesson, page 133, he said, The study of the incarnation of Christ, his atoning sacrifice and mediatorial work, will employ the mind of the diligent students as long as time shall last. And look into heaven with his unnumbered years, he will ex ex exclaim, Great is the mystery of godliness. So by studying the life of Christ, his mediatorial, his incarnation, he said the diligent student will exclaim, great is the mystery of godliness. So brethren, Christ has been revealed to us as the mystery. <clears throat> and <clears throat> that mystery did not finish there at the cross. No, he went up to heaven to begin his mediatorial work. And now he is in the most holy place doing his final, his final work of intervention for his people. Now, before that mystery is finished, he said, the mystery of his will must be made known. That's what is taking place now. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9, it said, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he had purpose in himself. So, we had received the knowledge of the mystery of his will. So what is the mystery of his will? Hmm? That's another very important question. What is that? He said, we know that uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 3, what is the mystery of his will that is mentioned here? He said, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So notice this. He says that this is the will of God, our what? Our sanctification. We know that uh, in Hebrew is written, you know, follow peace with all men, and what else? And holiness without which no, no man shall see the Lord. This is a condition. There was a man that was traveling in a ship. <clears throat> and at that time, uh, the trip took many days. You know, so he took his Bible with him. And as he was traveling, he was reading the Bible. Reading and reading and reading. One day, the captain of the ship told that man, that man was a Christian. He said, why do you read the Bible? He said, God doesn't exist. He said, I have come to the conclusion that there is no God. He said, I have never seen God. He said, I have, I have traveled 
and he began numbering the different countries that he went, the different sea that he has uh, navigated. He said, I have never seen God. And he also refers to a telescope that he had. He said, I can look far away. I can look up. And I have never seen God. So he came to that conclusion. This man, the Christian man, opened his Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and he read to him verse number 8. Matthew 5, 8, and this is what he says. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So no wonder why this captain has never been able to see God. Because there is a condition. And that condition is what? Purity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So brethren, he said, this is the will of God. The mystery of his will must be made known unto us. This is the will of God, our sanctification. And in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It said, Blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And notice what he says in verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So brethren, you have been chosen for a purpose, for a reason. And what is that reason? But not only a chosen recently, he said, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. So no wonder why 160 years has passed already. And Christ has not come because something must take place. And that, that something is our sanctification, brethren. So what are we doing in order to hasten the second coming of Christ? <clears throat> what was the reason why Jesus came and died on the cross? Why? In Ephesians chapter 5, I like the book of Ephesians. It's so good. And it has so interesting so many interesting statements here. Ephesians chapter 5, we are going to read a beautiful comparison that is given between husband and wife and Christ and his church. Chapter 5 and verses 25 to 27. He said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Notice this, you know, the same Christ gave himself for the church. For what? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So Christ died for what reason? He said that he might sanctify us. And verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spat or wrinkle of any such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So what is the reason why Christ <coughs> gave his life? Is that to sanctify, hmm, to sanctify the people. And the truth will sanctify you, brethren. Hmm? We are purified by obedience to the truth. Did you know that? This is written in, in 1 Peter. Hmm? Let us take a look. 1 Peter chapter 1. And verse 22, First Peter 1, 22, it says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obedient, obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, seeing that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So that is why the truth was opening to us, wide open, since 1844. You know that, you know. 
1844, the brethren could not even understand what was taking place. There were many things that they could not understand, but now it is being made known unto us. The requirement of the commandments of God is being clearly presented to every one of us since 1844, and it is written in, the, in Revelation 10 that you must prophesy again. The light should shine more and more since 1844 because the truth will do a work of sanctification. John 17, 17, he said, Sanctify then through thy truth, thy word is true. It is almost impossible for any person to be sanctified believing error. It is impossible. The Lord has given us the truth with the purpose of sanctification. Now, the mystery of Christ must be preached first. <clears throat> and what is the mystery of Christ? Hmm? In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians, the first chapter, In verses 20, let us read from 25 to 27. He said, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, brethren. No wonder why Sister White wrote, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then Christ will come to claim them as his own. So now we have an answer why the great delay. Now, for how long the delay will go on? We never know, but it, it depends on us, brethren. It's up to us. The Apostle Peter said that hasting the second coming of Christ, we can haste the second coming of Christ. How? And I like the words used by the Apostle John. In 1 John chapter 3, and these words are full of hope. 1 John chapter 3 and verses 2 and 3. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So brethren, he said, we are today waiting for the Lord, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. What is the real condition that we must be before the Lord's come? He says in verse uh, 3, And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. So what are we supposed to do? a work of purification. And we are purified obeying the truth. Sometimes we understand the truth, we, we teach the truth sometimes, but we don't leave, we don't obey. So no wonder why it doesn't have effect, the effect of transformation, the effect of purification of our character. And uh, prophecy tells us this way, brethren, the work that is going on today, this last day, is very clear to us. The prophet Daniel, when he spoke about the time of the end, this is not just a any time. The time of the end is very, very significant, significant for us. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, Daniel 12, Verses 9 and 10. Verse 9, he said, 
And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for these words are chosen, closed up, and sealed till the time of the end. And notice what will happen in the time of the end. Verse 10. Many shall be what? Purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So, brethren, what is being prophesied in these last days? He said, many shall be purified. Are you among those many? Are you progressing as the light has been given us? Are we obeying the light? Or are we going to spend 160 more years here? Are we going to? 40 years in the wilderness and they were complaining, oh, 40 years here, too long. 120 given to the time of Noah. And this man, he said, was preaching and preaching and preaching and building the ark. And people did not believe. He said, the people of God is repeating the same experience. The same experience. But it says here, many shall be purified and made white. And they will be tried. Now, the, the, the process of purification is not an easy thing. No. Purification is very hard. Let me read to you some of the... In... In... Uh, Volume 4, page 89, he said, I was pointed to the providence of God among his people and was shown that every trial made by the refining, purifying process upon professed Christian proved some to be dross. So every trial is coming to us for the purpose of purification. He said, in every religious crisis, some fall under temptation. And the shaking of God blows away multitude like dry leaves. So notice this. In this process of purification, he said, many are shaken out. Shaken out. He said, how? The comparison given here is as dry leaves. And this is a very uh, good time to make this comparison. You see how the, the, the trees are losing their, their, their leaves. They dry and they fall. Last, uh, last Wednesday, I, I drove by my street when I live now, and I, I saw uh, people cleaning and, and trying to uh, clean their, their front yard with all those dry leaves. But now this morning I went by again and it's full already. More dry leaves. So in, if the wind comes, you know, they blows away. So he said the shaking of God. And what is the reason for the shaking? Purification. The church must be purified. He said the shaking of God blows away multitudes like dry leaves. <clears throat> and unfortunately... This is what happened. In volume 9, page 222, he said, God's love for his church is infinite. His care of his heritage is unceasing. He suffered no affliction to come upon the church, but such as it is essential for her purification. He said, he will purify his church even as he purified the temple at the beginning and close of his ministry on earth. So God will purify the church. That's a very good news, brethren. Now, it will be a better news if we allow this process of purification to take place in our lives, to correct our wrongs, to change. He said, we are children of God, but it yet not appear what we shall be. But we know, and we thank the Lord for not to come yet, because otherwise, otherwise we would not be ready. So it is 
of our advantage that the Lord is delaying His coming. You know, He's waiting for you and I to surrender all. He's waiting for everyone to make up His decision. Hmm? And God will purify His children. What will be the result of the people of God being purified? What will be? He says uh, in Great Controversy, page 613, Great Controversy 613, he said, When the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared now for the trying hour before then. So, notice that as a result of the church being purified, we will receive a great revival and awakening. And this is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in great major, and which is called the latter rain. And when we think about the 1844, there was a great awakening at that time. I was reading the great controversy yesterday describing this event. He said the news that Christ was coming went to every missionary station in the whole world. They, were, they knew that Christ was coming and people saw their properties. They were making all kinds of preparation. They were ready. Many were ready for the coming of the Lord. And that was a great awakening. That was a great uh, uh, revival. And Sister White mentioned that uh, in these last days, when the church is purified, he said, they will come upon his people a great revival that was, that was never seen since apostolic time. So it will overpass the, the day of Pentecost. But who will take part of that revival? Who? He said there are prophecies that must be fulfilled first. And one of them is that many shall be purified and made white. We know that when prophecies shall be fulfilled, Revelation 19 will also take place. Revelation 19, speaking about his church, verses 7, 19 of Revelation, verses 7 to 9, he said, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So what is the, the condition? His wife has made herself ready. And verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arranged in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So these are beautiful words. And now the blessing. Verse 9, And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. So brethren, the message of the third angel has been going on for quite a very long time. 160 years is enough. Now, <clears throat> are we really being going along with the message? Are we being purified? As he said, are we ready? As he mentioned here, he said, and unto her <clears throat> is in verse, uh, verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And blessed are those, and we have been blessed, brethren. We have received the third angel's message, we have received the health message. We have received the understanding of the sealing of the 144,000. 
we understand the requirements to see God. You know, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, no wonder why these men could not see God as he traveled from place to place because it was, uh, there is one condition. And the condition is the purity. Eh? And brethren, make sure that you are being purified by obeying the truth. So may the Lord help us that none of us here may fail in that day. And before that time, he said, Behold, I send you Elijah. Be behold, I send you a reformer. Behold, I send you one that will revive you to make the proper change to see Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. Because the question is, who shall be able to stand? Who shall be able to, to say, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. Only those that are purified will be able to welcome Jesus in the clouds of heaven. So may the Lord help us that every one of us may be ready in that glorious day. Amen. 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 Our most gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much for giving us the privilege to understand the time that we are living. We know that the time has been longer than we thought, but Father, we know that you are long-suffering and you're waiting for every one of us. Amen. So help us not to make you wait no longer. Help us, Father, to surrender all to Jesus and to reflect his character because we know that this is the last message of mercy that is to be proclaimed, that Christ in you, the hope of glory, is to be manifested throughout the world. And this is the light that will enlighten this whole earth with his glory. We, Father, ask that you may forgive us, forgive the negligence of the past, and help us to redeem the time. Amen. Be with us and help us to bring up the thorough reformation that we need to us first and then to our family, Amen. that we may present to this world a clear message that Jesus can transform the hearts and he can make us holy. Yes. Help us, Father, because we are neglectful many times. Yes, Be with everyone and give us, Father, thy help of thy Holy Spirit to increase in knowledge and increase our obedience. Amen. Amen. Be with all thy people throughout the world and we present thy church extended in different parts of this world that you may bring a revival that will prepare the souls and be with all thy people, especially as we face the last day's events that will take place very soon. Amen. We ask all these things not because we are worthy, but we ask in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Amen.